Hello, what's up everybody? My name is Dad Radish and I'm your vegetable father. We're back with more Vault of the Void. Um, hasn't been as big of a gap since the last time streaming, so let's just jump right into the run. Vault of the Void, a roguelike uh, deck building game, card game. Um, game that I think is kind of the best, uh, one of the better kind of mechanical takes um, on Slay the Spire. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I just noticed this compass rose. It says void, 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 void again. So uh, if you needed a hint about where we are. Okay, great. So this um, event is the Soul Collector. There are those who shun the idea of essence as currency and have decided instead to collect the souls of those who have passed. Artifacts, cards, and gems available to purchase with your collected souls. Okay, so let's see. 28. Minimum cost, 5 souls. Yeah, we have we have 5 souls. Let's uh, see what we can buy here. Hmm. Let's take a look at the most expensive thing. So this is uh, an artifact. It can go up in the corner. Rusty fish hook. At the start of your turn, gain 2 volatile hidden blades. So that means you have to use them at the start. Uh, 0 cost, 6 damage right away. Um, if you have a way of turning combo on, um, they will trigger, the card will play itself the number of times that um, you use combo. Oh, and they're balanced, so the balanced keyword means that it doesn't consume your uh, combo stacks when you play it. So, this is interesting. Kind of slow them down, slow down your enemies once you get, get them a little bit low. So, 28. Uh, we could not buy both. Wishbone. Every, each time you draw a Bane, draw one. That's pretty cool. I can see that being really useful. So we could get the fish hook and the Wishbone. Random artifact. That's kind of appealing. But these two are pretty solid. Um, a Bane being like any generic sort of like harmful card. So anyway. Yeah, let's... Actually... Let's check the map. The shrine. Dark Idol. Yeah, okay. So I don't think we're gonna... We should spend these souls now is basically what I'm thinking. So it's cool. We don't want either of these things. Don't care about that. Um, well, I guess actually gain one energy for each bleeding enemy. That can help us. So yeah, let's go here and then go here. So go to the shrine. Heal 35 HP. That's actually really useful to us right now. Um, I wish I didn't have to do it, but those are the breaks. Okay, we're fighting the unholy court. In the light, prayer is uttered to the divine. Here, there's no such concept. The spiritual know, the spiritual, hmm. the spiritual know of nothing else but their twisted master, their unholy king. Well-rounded fight with some healing and the ability to inflict fear. Fear, I think, is a debuff where if you have a fear stack. You draw your hand, you have to get rid of the card. Or you have to you can pick a card to get rid of, I think that's how fear works, so. Cool. Fear, let's see what we find up here. Yeah, after drawing you must discard cards equal to your your fear value. Okay, so double check. Um each of now uh, just a reminder of one of the mechanics. Um as long as the battle progress bar is empty, it means that uh that when you kill an enemy it'll respawn uh, uh someone from from the the deck from the stack for this particular encounter so this only got us 50 percent of the way there we would need to get both of them in order to see no more um no more uh ads uh this number is how much damage that they will add to your uh i think they call it a threat stack um and this is the number of times they're going to swing so it's telling me here i'm going to get 14 incoming threat that means at the end of this round, they're going to act, or I take my turn, they take their turn, they put 14 on the stack. If I don't deal with it in my next turn, then I take that damage at the end of my turn. Um, so that is how it's going. Um, hello to Dawnthorn in the chat. Nice to see you. Um, this is the uh, new roguelike, or new, newish. I mean, I think it went into early access in December, so newish. Um, uh, deck building roguelike. So, all right, let me see what I can, or let me kind of plan out my turn here. 
So Blade Storm, uh, apply Bleed 5 to all enemies. That's sort of what this build is about. It's about uh, taking advantage of Bleed, so I'll want to apply that. Um, this is really bursty, and I feel like I can't um, take advantage of it now. It's kind of a finisher, so I'm going to hold down right-click on it. What that'll do is it'll purge... Um, yeah, it'll purge the card and add one to my energy. So um, that's a nice little flexible option. Um, energy and your hand stay from uh, turn to turn, or from, from you can hold on to them turn to turn. So there's a little bit more of a planning element um, in this in this game. So let's see. Uh, this is sort of a buff. Um, each time bleed triggers, usually each time bleed triggers at the end of the enemy turn does the damage and then goes down by one. Instead, it'll increase by two. So this is uh, pretty good for my general win condition. So I'm going to that go. Um, then otherwise, yeah, let's save this. Try and build up a little more energy or purge it rather. And then let's um, put some damage. Um, I think I want to put damage here. So the king has a passive. When defeated, five banes are added to your deck. We don't, we're don't. we not worried about that. We have a wishbone. That means we're going to draw if that happens. And then the attack he's going to do right now is a special attack. What's yours is mine. The top card of your deck is discarded and gained its one frenzy. So the frenzy means next time he'll swing twice, whatever this value is. So he'll swing for 14 instead um, on their next turn. So let me go ahead and uh, let's just try and kind of burst him down if we can. It's also stacks of vulnerable, so take advantage of that uh we don't need this until there's some damage in our threat stack so let's end turn all right so that's putting sort of potential damage on the stack that's putting potential damage on the, our threat stack uh the bleed damage got applied and then it ticked up so let's see so we want to try and find a way to block the 14 threat so great, we have a way to do that. We'll use From Shadow right here, and we get to apply five bleed while we're at it. Um, so now there's only two damage we're going to suffer at the end of this turn. Um, so the question is, do I need to hold on to these in order? Should I use one now? We'll leave three extra, or should I just save it because I have to mitigate a lot of incoming threat next turn? So I'll probably save them. Uh, wait a minute. At the start of your turn, I totally misread this card, I, or this um, artifact. I thought it was at the start of the round, but this is just two volatile hidden blades every turn, which is pretty sweet. So, okay. I'm going to save these. Um, I mean, play these for free, basically. Um, let's see. Let's do this. We know that with three energy, we'll be able to at least play these cards and then whatever else we draw that helps mitigate. Um, the block cards that we have in here in general are better. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, five of ten. I'm wondering if we should discard this because we know we're going to draw. How many times? I think you draw up to five. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get rid of this, imagining that we're going to um, draw a better block card in the next turn. So we're going to take this two damage, um, and then they're going to take their turn. Just attacks. After they, after each of these enemies goes, then they take the three damage. Great, so we got Sanguine Shell, which is one of our better um, defenses. It's block 20, so that should get us there. Ooh, this gives us combo one, so that's good. That means anything that we play that's swift will play will land twice. This reduces threat to zero. This is um, a pretty cool, um, pretty cool card. It's expel, so that means at, when I play it, it goes away, and I can purge it to block ten. And um, that's actually so. I really wanted that. That's the upgraded version of the card, and I think that's super utility because it's for energy, and I would only rarely do you want to spend that for energy. So. I think this is probably a good time to... Yeah, between Sanguine Shell and, and uh, Purging Ice Wall, we'll be able to block everything. So we should do that. Um, before we do that, we should uh, add as much bleed as we can. And actually, it doesn't look like we can do more bleed with the cards we have. This is just a damage card, so let's just do that. Let's see, we pulled 20 off that stack. 
purge that, blocking 10. So we're doing pretty well here. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a combo. So that adds to my combo stacks here. The next swift attack hard played will trigger an additional X times. So here, this will trigger twice. Because it's balanced, it won't consume that stack. So we'll get six damage off of this. Oh, no, more, because he's vulnerable. Um, so vulnerable to the tune of, what, 50% more damage. So 10 total. I mean, you can kind of see the tiny tooltip there. Um, all right, and then this is a uh, an AOE. If the target's bleeding, it'll de deal seven damage across the board of 12 if, the, if it's bleeding. So I think that means we kill the king here. Yeah. Get those banes, not worried. Hold on to this parry, end the turn. All right, if we defeat both of these um, characters, oh no, now that uh, I forgot the uh, battle progress bar wasn't full, so it added a new card for us to kind of take care of. So let's see, let's see. All right, so another feature in this game is that they have void stones. The void stones, when you get them, you can pop them into an empty socket on a card and it adds an effect. So this effect, ghost, means that um, when you play a card with a ghost, you get another copy. It's volatile, so you have to play it in that turn. Um, then why does it have rebound? I think the rebound is upgrade. So the first time you play it, it gets returned to your hand. So when I play this, it's effectively happens three times. That's um, three instances of uh, block or five blocks, and then it'll get me to 15. So that's how I'm going to play this out. Um, we'll go. Boom, boom. Oops, I didn't want to apply the bleed there. I'll apply the bleed there. Oh no, it's to a random enemy. Anyway, let's see. So this is going to heal. Ooh, it's going to heal 50% of max. Okay, so we have to kill them here. We can't rely on the bleed damage to take them out. Uh, let's see. Do we get there with this? Five. No. Um, okay. This triggers the target's bleed. Does do they take? Well, we'll find out here if they take the um, if they take the uh, vulnerable damage. So that's the number in parentheses. They have nine bleed, but because of vulnerable, they'll take fourteen damage. So let's see if that triggers. It does trigger. Cool. So. Um, I think now's the time to burst them down. This is an attack with five incoming threat. We'll definitely be able to block it with this next turn. Let's just go ham with our hidden blades and then, yeah. All right, so we filled up the battle progress bar. So this is the last um, character we need to, or uh, enemy we need to take care of, and then we're good. So let's see. Don't need this. No way of triggering Swift, which would be a cool way to get 10 bleed. So we'll do that. We'll block five. Not worried about that. Um, a blood will deal damage. And then the hidden blades. There we go. All right. So hopefully this is just a downhill slide to the win. Uh, so when they get low to a certain point, they'll try to heal up to their max HP. And then they'll um, gain AP and Frenzy. Um, so AP being damage, it'll go up to 10 damage and then they'll swing twice. So it'll be a 20, they'll be able to do a 20 point swing. Um, all right, let's use the blades. Oh no, use the com, use the combo first. Um, can we get there? Uh, let's do this. Each of these is worth eight damage, or so I think we'll get there. What we'll do is, so you play black up, and then we'll gain, uh, gain five lighted up. So there's lighted up. There's five of them. It'll deal eight damage. Um, it'll add one overcharge. Cool. Made it through. Gain one energy for each bleeding enemy. Um, I actually wonder if we're gonna use this that much. Gain three energy. We're usually we've usually been okay with energy. That hasn't been a problem. So I think this is a utility player. We'll have to look out for ways we can um, make this more more of a problem. We have a cap of five energy anyway. So okay. So this will be a standard combat encounter. 
this uh it'll that's the card reward trigger targets bleed um let's see yeah um so don torn in the chat not sure about that battle progress mechanic seems a bit forced otherwise it's looking kind of cool though yeah um now what do i think about it yeah force is a good way to describe that i think like it, it is a little bit forced but i don't it does mean you have to choose who to who to fight first um there's it adds a little bit more texture to that decision so i think that i think that's kind of okay and um yeah, so far, mechanically, like, um, I've had interesting things to decide about so far. Um, okay, Band of Raiders. Waning remnants of the long-devoured gods of war and thunder. Once the proud warriors delved deep, seeking to reclaim these forgotten runic sites, but twisted men soon shaped them into parodies of their once righteous selves. So, fight tips. These creatures will get stronger for every zero-cost card you play. Um, okay, I have now two in my hand at the beginning of every turn. And I have the ability to gain high amounts of fortitude. Fortitude meaning is um, armor that lasts for a turn. So potions, let's see. Is this a good time to use a health potion? Let's go back to our backpack real quick. Can we go over our backpack here? Oh, manage deck, here we go. So this is the deck manager. Uh, let's see. Potions are actually cards. They just like automatically, you just automatically use them at the beginning um, com of combat. So um, let's see. Gain 25 rage. Creatures will skip their first turn. Apply too vulnerable, too slow, too weak to all enemies. So this is kind of appealing. Um, hopefully it'll allow me to get a bit of a, uh, I'm going to use this here. Yeah. Um, Hopefully I can get a little bit of damage on, I think the Berserker is the one that will get more powerful when I play zero cost cards. So I can kind of get a little bit of a jump on, on that. All right, here we go. All right, so we tend to start with a uh, Blade Storm. Deal five bleed to all enemies. We do Laceration, so it only ever gets worse them um let's let's see there's no it doesn't have any vulnerable i don't have a way to do vulnerable so we'll just put these in blood does that still trigger this creature will gain one frenzy for each natural or modifiers zero cost card played uh boo <laughs> okay at the end of the turn we'll reduce frenzy to two and gain ap equal to frenzy lost okay so uh, these go away at the end of my turn, so I'm not too worried about them clogging up my hand. But I guess I should just stop playing them. Uh, for the throat. Uh, 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 I have to get rid of this to be able to play this. That's fine. We're trying to get as much damage as we can right off the bat. Uh, let's see. I forgot to swap out my spell. The spell, you chuck every card in your hand for five damage a piece, and it deals that damage to everybody. So maybe that is good, actually. Because in a big turn, I can use this to... Well, I have, I have seven cards, so I can affect 35 across the board. So that's pretty good. All right. I know there's 16 incoming. Um, I can I can save this for a purge. Um, I can save that too. Um, let's see. I can purge this to apply bleed 2 to all enemies. So let's just do that. We're not going to use that ability quite yet. It's all block cards. Wow. How do you feel about that? I'll draw one card next turn and then add add blades that I'm not going to use. I think that's okay. Um, as long as I'm not taking damage and as long as they're not getting too strong. Um, yeah, as long as they're not getting too much stronger. Yeah, okay. I think I'm okay with, with what's happening here. So do nothing turn, which is kind of a big deal. But bleed is working to my advantage here. Um, I keep finding ways to block all this threat. So this blocks the perfect amount of um, threat at 16 and gives me combo too. So that's great. That means whenever I decide to use these, it's going to be a good. It'll be a good turn. 
Um, I get to block 12 next turn. Let's see. Just do this now. 30, 35, about 30, wait, uh, no, 6. It'll only be 30 damage. It'll be at 50. Yeah, that doesn't, we're not quite there yet, so. Okay, 10 is a lot of fortitude, so that means that this next turn is just not a, like, a high damage turn, so. But can I block 12? Yes, I can. I can apply 5 bleed, and that's not damage, I think, so. Yeah, that just adds to that stack. Um, and I'm not worried about any of the rest of this, so we'll just keep going until they're in, um, bacon bomb range. I don't know how runic pillar is attacking, but that's what it is. Okay. So it's now the time to deal 15. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right, I got to mitigate 10. Uh, I can purge this to block 10. No problem. Uh, now, uh, bu -bu. do I attack first? Double all fortitude gain takes half damage from bleed. Uh, I think this is the thing that will, that I can take out faster, probably. So I can now play these hidden blades without worrying about it too much. Cool, you get combo back and uh, add on four block. Don't mind that. We, uh, this tags is a, the perfect tag, which is taking no damage so far. I would love to get out of this fight, not without taking any damage. So this is six, keep our stacks. This is another six, keep our stacks. Um, this will be 10 plus six. Yeah, so we'll get there, and then these the runic pillars will. Mm, we'll just block five here. And the next time there's 24 incoming, and we should be able to block it fine. Mm -hmm. More block cards. Yeah, we gotta do this. Triggers all bleed. And then we're gonna do this to mitigate that last bit of threat. We have to discard a card. Um, I think we have to keep the parries, so we'll get rid of this. Let's do that. Let's see how, see how far we can get here with this. Yeah, we're gonna need to do our blocks next turn, probably. Oh, good. No damage this time around. Let's see. 7, 35. What is it going to do? Is it going to attack? Should I toss all the cards? Hmm. We have some of our AoE stuff happening, so let's do that. Um, if we get rid of all this, we'll be at 5 and can make use of the backup, so sure. If I worry about the 20... I will actually, we'll mitigate a bunch of the threat by... Okay, I'm okay with this plan. Uh... Yeah, play the backup. All right. It'll give us uh, each one playing each one of those also gave us overcharge, which gives us plus five to max, max energy, and then we'll gain that energy on the next at the beginning of the next round. Also, oh, these are zeros. All right, that's ten. Hopefully, we draw some block cards. I think there's a good. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, seven. Thirty-five. That is not enough to take it out. What if we deal all this damage? Can we deal all this damage? I don't know. We'll just have to do it. This is the highest damage pattern I think I can put out. No, we're going to take this 10 damage. Tw 
12. Yeah. Ugh. All right, well. Those are the breaks. So close. Oh, because I had to fight a fucking pillar. All right, uh, let's see. Combo. Bup. Bup. All right, and then we're fighting some kind of wagon thing. Let's see. So we'll take a second. Um, purple Void Stone is gain overcharge. Well, you have overcharge, you gain one extra energy each turn. Max energy increased by one per stack and ticks down by one. So, hmm. what do we play when we're setting up? From Shadow is kind of a setup card. And it costs two. Yeah, that's a good one. So next time we play that, um, it'll give us one extra mana for the next the next round, or extra energy for the next round. Uh, one higher in cap, and then it'll actually load us up a little bit more. So that's good. Usually if you're blocking, you're kind of trying to set up for another, another action there. And do I want to use this potion before the next battle? Maybe. This might be a good one to put in. Trigger target's bleed, so if we assume that this next battle is going to take a long time. Well, actually, let's see if we can... I think we can take a look at what, what we're fighting and then we can change it. Yeah, okay. The Black Coach. From the darkness, an, an epitome of damnation emerges, taking form of an oppressive coach shrouded in gloom. Victims caught in its path are violently churned through thundering hooves of nightmare steeds, while their souls are wrenched into the abyss of the Black Coach. These creatures minions can gain high amounts of fortitude. Okay, that's a lot of block. The slower you kill his minions, the greater his AP will be. So it wants us to take care of the... It wants us to keep taking care of the minions, I assume. Okay. So... For the spell, we're going to go back to the backstab. Um, for this, we have to throw away our whole hand, which is, like, less sure that we want to do that most of the time. And then uh, for the deck, let's see. Knowing that we want to kill those adds. Might want more attack cards and fewer, um, like, this is just a bleed boosting card, right? We could just rely on... This is kind of like a finisher um, when you want to burst down that last amount of damage. Yeah, okay. So what ways do we have of dealing a lot of damage like right away? Or in what you know, in one go, we're not trying to... Let's see, wait, I filter attacks okay did i socket something oh no i just put in this bleed it out which i don't think I need. okay anyway um okay eight damage it's swift so it'll uh benefit from combo or to all eight and if you have overcharge deal another eight what makes you think we'll have overcharge more often this Three damage, sift one. It's it's a swift attack. Swift attacks, remember, are um, um, are boosted by combo. We could just put a hidden blade in the in the deck. Um, maybe actually, if the fight goes long, we'll feel better about. Um, where is it? Smoke bomb at the start of each turn, gain one volatile hidden blade. This at two is some, sometimes feels too expensive to play. That'll be useful. This is just a Hail Mary to save us from that one turn that's going to kill us. So that's why we're holding on to that. Um, from Shadow at block 12 and Bide at block 16. Well, this is a source of combo. That's why we're holding on to that. So. Really, I don't know if we need Bladestorm here, but it's the best jump start. Well, I think, okay, we talked about taking out for the throw, so that's an obvious cut. Um, 
So I guess this is another change um, to the formula out, out from um, where it was with Slay the Spire, which is um, you can change your deck when you when you're facing an encounter. Um, for this reason, people there, this is a, one of the reasons people like the game, and I think they they say that the game feels less like RNG dependent, or it has these like places for you to mitigate RNG by doing like card game things, like um, like managing your deck. So. All right, let's see. Maybe put another draw blood back in there. Um, how do I feel about light it up? I feel okay about light it up. Um, yeah, I don't know. As a finisher, I feel like it's gonna be okay. I want another draw blood in there. How do I feel about the berries? Yeah. Block 20, Expel. This gains overcharge, but it's only the time that you play it. Expel means that it's out of the deck when you do it. But I guess I've seen the ways in, in which, like, yeah, that one extra turn can make a big difference, you know, especially if you're up to a high lead amount, like 30, so. But am I really going to get there? The only, the actually, the only way I'm going to get there is with Bladestorm. So maybe I do need uh Yeah, maybe I do need one of these. Okay. Great tactics be good. Deal five. What is this? Deal this is five deal eight, but I don't think we're gonna always have lead on, so let's let's put on the underhanded tactics here, because a lot of times I think the those ads are I'm going to predict they're going to be attacking and applying will be cool. It's a way to save myself some. And then this is just raw, more damage usually. So let's take the power strike instead. Block six. Oh, that's better than a parry. So we're just going to do it. Probably should have had that there before. Hmm. Is this strictly better? It's a rebound, so it costs two. Yeah, we're gonna do it. Okay. And then do I take this? 20% of my max HP is about 20. Yeah. If I don't do it here. All right, let's get in. Okay. 170? <laughs> oh, okay, so if you kill a Nightmare Steed, nothing, it doesn't come back. Man, it gains Fortitude equal to 5% of its max HP. I really get through that. Conjure the Dead, gain 4 AP, okay. While Nightmare Steeds are alive, this creature is immune. It's immune to all damage and debuffs. <laughs> okay. Um, Gaze of Death, inflict Fear 1 and Vulnerable 1... All right, all right, all right, all right. Doing that. Uh, actually, do I want to save this for when? No, whatever. We'll just burst it down when we get there. Um, don't need a block. We'll go. We'll go. Let's go. Um, yeah. Let's just add more to you. Add more. This adds what? Three bleed. Oh, it adds vulnerable too. Should have done it at the beginning. Misplay. Six. This will gain four. Some debuffs. Here, choose a card to discard. Um, can I mitigate? What am I mitigating? Nine. Get rid of sustenance for now, because I still feel like we're kind of setting up. Um, don't have enough for smoke bomb this round. So... Block six. Oh yeah, that's great. Doesn't need to block them, just block six. That's okay. 
Um, actually, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna put these two away to get the smoke bomb going. Because we're trample. What is that? Increase frenzy by one. Okay. Trample. Increase frenzy by one. All right. Let's see. Low fortitude. Yeah. So we're just getting past the fortitude here. That is not enough damage. All right, 32 incoming. That's a lot. Um, we're not ready for this yet. Combo does us really well here. This is going to help a bunch to mitigate threat. Ah, I consumed the combo stacks. I should have done this first. So many misplays. 12, or taking 12, taking, what from this? Taking 16, 12, 16, 28, yep. Okay. Uh, trigger all bleed. Does that get us anywhere? 20 damage. There'll be 42 left. I don't hate it, but. Alright, we have a lot of block to, to put up, so let's do this. We'll apply this 5 bleed. 16 block to uh, put up. Um, we'll get 10. 1. I'll take the 1. That That is fine. Um, yeah, let's keep stacking it here. Then... Boom. 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 Right. 40, we'll get 41 out of this. Um, do we want to spread it at all to get a better trigger here? No, I think we just need it. I want to get rid of one of these as soon as possible. All right, that should be reachable. Can I gain combo? Am I going to do it anyway with Bide? Sure. Gain combo. Ooh. Oh yeah, we need to get through here. Yep. Then, what do we want to do next? This expels. Okay, let's do that. Uh, five to all enemies. Yeah, let's try and keep accelerating this. Um, okay. Round five. Oh, this is going to swing for 21 when it decide when we get to that point and start swinging. Ooh, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this fight. Um, I don't think I killed this thing fast enough. All right, let's see. I still have two combo. Both of these are swift, so yeah, let's use the hidden blades first. Burst, burst, burst. Then do we want to deal 24 damage or apply 10 bleed? Hmm. Apply the 10 bleed. And then uh, save this. Or purge it, rather, so we have the Energy. 24. No combo. Let's see. It'll be... Mm, 8 times 5. Uh, 40. Okay. I think we might be able to get through this guy in this turn. Will I get all of that? Uh, well, but I'll have all done no blocking. So why don't we, yeah, I guess we have to do this. Hmm. Okay, it's gonna be a bit of waste. Will it be, actually? I don't know. Um. Okay. 
Let's block four. Draw one, discard one. Will it let me discard one of those? That's funny. Okay. Then we can bleed on it. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, the rebound kind of helped us here, I guess. Because we can get rid of these, apply that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Get rid of one of these, apply this. All right. Five overcharge. Hopefully that helps us stay alive here. We're gonna take 29 damage next turn. All right, let's um. Play this first. Gain this combo. Start going. Uh, 151 HP left. Um, okay. We need to block 29 next turn. So what do we get out of this? Block 4, rebound 8, plus 5, 13, plus 6. Um... 19. Uh, that's okay. It's probably as good as we're going to get right now. Well, oh, it's a huge swing. Um, oh, and it'll keep going. All right. Well, anyway. Oh, sweet. We got some block. Got our block cards. Still have combo. Let's do this since we know we can benefit from the other hidden blade. So let's just keep... Pushing damage onto him, 119 HP to go. Um, block 12, sure. 11. Block 4, apply bleed. Um, one card to discard. Parry. Uh, we want to... Uh, hmm. We want to hold on to this, I think, because one of these is going to be the thing to stop. We can do this to block four, or we have overcharge, so we can deal 16. Uh, let's just keep blocking. Of these two, what to discard? Um, so this is 16, that's like three turns of five, uh, five bleed, so yeah, we'll just do that. Uh, all right. Another 29. I wonder if it does... Okay, it's an enraged attack. It'll decrease its frenzy by one. Oh, <laughs> that's brutal. Okay, so this is the time to play Ice Wall, because we're going to cancel 58. Um, and I think we want to do that with this. Yeah. Oh, it cancels that threat. Oof. Okay, well, drop that up. Still learning the game. Um, let's, ooh, I have no mana. I'm going to want to play this all next turn. Okay, so let's just drop the hidden blades on. I'm feeling like I, I have, ooh, yeah, I feel like I have a chance of surviving this round. Okay, it's no threat next time. Um, let's see. Can't add a uh, combo, so we're just going to pile on our six damages here. 29. That's funny. Um, oh, it'll die after the next round, so I don't think I need to... Um, but we should try and take as little damage as possible here. So, what does that mean? Anything where we draw is probably a good idea. Um, do this. We can increase our ratio a little bit. We don't need to worry about the attacking anymore. So, 12 is good. If we had to pick up one more of these, we'd pick up the uh, block 6. Mm -hmm. Can't purge this. All right. I think that's the most mitigation we can do. So we're going to take 19. It'll take 38. We win. 
Second round, second floor finish. Oh, we got a new spell, Nightmare Steed. That is fun. Okay, so here's what we have a choice. The spoils of victory are yours to choose from. Choose a reward from the list below to aid in your crusade against the void. Two random void stones. Two upgrade points that lets you upgrade cards or receive a booster pack, which is um, like five cards you can add to your deck. So I think this is a two upgrade points situation. I feel best about. I like my cards. I think I have some flex flex options to kind of pivot towards direct damage, or am I just grinding out bleeding and and, and uh, putting up block? So I'll grind upgrade points. Um. Wow, block 22. It's really worth the three energy. Um, let's see, let's see. makes this more expensive, but you gain two volatile hidden blades. That's four hidden blades every turn. Which is at minimum twelve like just twelve baked in damage every turn. As long as they it's not the kind of enemy who wants to see you playing more cards. Hmm. What's going on in the backpack? This is a more complicated question here. Scattershot seems like great value upgraded for two energy, seven damage to all enemies, and then you apply bleed six. Yeah, maybe this is a thing, because this can just replace one of the draw bloods, and it's like kind of no downside. Block six, gain one energy for each. Uh, oh, this is gain one energy plus block six. Hmm. Okay, let's keep poking through. I think it's Scattershot. Upgraded from Shadow is very good at block 12, I think. Okay, it's Scattershot. That is the thing, and then we get another upgrade point. I use this all the time, but I usually hold on to it. It usually tanks the first like major bit of damage for me um i like having a source of combo in the deck um so i think i'm gonna keep bide in there and if i'm gonna keep it then being able to block 22 repeatedly so this is going to leave my deck so yeah this seems like the way to go yeah being able to block 22 on a on a semi-regular basis is pretty good yep okay yep yep all right the void you can unleash your remaining soul points to inflict damage to the void 10 soul points what? 10 soul, um, okay. Oh, you can release your 155 damage. Oh, that's how much I can deal to the void in advance. To fight the void, you must first be two of his vault guardians, each of which will grant you a unique blessing. Four stand before you, the choice is yours. Okay, all right, oh yeah, I get it. Okay, so I can fight two of these things. Um, I don't, can't, do I carry these from? game to game. I'm not going to do it because I feel like 10 soul points is not very many, and let's just see what happens with them, and I don't... This is my, what, like... I mean, it's my first full run, so I'm not sad about these going away, so, okay. Hmm. Okay. Queen of Ages. From Battleground... Or Battle Round 6 onwards during the Void Fight, start each turn with Rage 50%. Don't like that. My... My deck, because of Bleed, tends to run long fights. During the void fight, at the start of each turn, overcharge one. Increase your mech. Wait. Oh no, the, that's the blessing that you get. 
Uh, hmm. Blessing of energy seems good. Blessing of weakness. Each time the void casts fury, it will suffer weak four and vulnerable four. That seems pretty cool. When fighting the void, delay block six at the start of each turn. Block at the start of your next turn before drawing cards. Also seems good. I don't know what fury is. It sounds bad. But so to me, it kind of feels like mitigating whatever is happening when it casts fury seems good. Um, and having more energy, especially for these big block cards to be able to do more later because energy carries over, that seems good. I'll start with this. And then if, um, depending on how I'm feeling out of that fight, I'll go to that. A spider nest. A place of phobia filled with webs and spindly legs. Countless eyes peer from darkness, patiently waiting for the next soul to tumble into that funnel. Fight tips. High frenzy creatures that get weaker the more you attack them. Okay. Even if you kill them all at once, the unending swarm can still have more reinforcements in store for you. You wish to receive the blessing from this fight. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm going to take a pause for a couple minutes to uh, drink a little water and, like, blink. <laughs> So uh, I will be right back. Okay. Back now, ready to take on the spider nest. Let's see what this nightmare steed is. Add a volatile shield wall to your hand for two, block X, equal to 15 plus one for each ability uh, played this turn. You can do that every two turns. Uh, okay, what's happening with my abilities? How many abilities do I have in my deck? Um, I was thinking I wanted Scattershot. Ooh, I definitely want Scattershot in this fight. Good thing I looked at this. Wait, okay, how many abilities? Attack, attack, oh no, no, wait, okay. Blue's ability? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 12 out of wait played in which turn last turn played this turn that's a little tricky because if you're playing ability abilities are often block cards so you usually played your block cards so getting extra block when you've already played your block cards doesn't seem great so i guess it's this but maybe Bacon Bomb here, because it says that it's going to be a swarm. So, yeah, okay. Well, let's switch to this. We might want to take out a bunch of things at once. Um, okay. Knowing that, we kind of uh, set ourselves up for um, fighting multiple, or fighting a single, en single enemies, doing as much damage as possible. Maybe we want to that reason okay being able to do 40 damage in a turn how do i feel about it uh, it's pretty good there's like no equivalent and i mean you can split it up right so yeah i think that's that can't be the thing i guess what i'm looking for is where do i how can i put in blades upon blades I mean, I guess I just replace a draw blood because this is just sort of like eight damage card. Yeah, that's what I was going to do there. No, 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 that's not right. Not blades upon blades. Uh, scatter shot. Okay. All right, think about this again. High bleed. Okay, maybe we take this out. Hmm, okay. This is an AoE. 
Mm, I don't think I need this. All right. Cut it. Let's see. Attacks. One damage attacks. Let's see. Or one energy attacks. Um... Five and or usually deal eight. Mm. Deal eight more if you have over. Yeah, draw blood is fine actually here. So I think I'll replace this. Um, an attack that's like cheap. Deal six. Mm, I don't think I want to go more expensive. All right, let's just see how we feel about this. I know I took one out, but there it is back again. Apply two to all enemies. Oh, this is a good way. I mean, it's a purge too, so. Gain an energy and apply bleed two to all enemies. That's pretty good value. Block six, gain a blade. That's, yeah, that's. Uh, strictly better than most parries. Ability. Uh, block five, yeah, for two. Blade storm, sustenance, quickness. Oh, that's our other source of um, combo. And it, I didn't show up in the upgrade thing because I have already upgraded it. Um, Bide, Sanguine Shell, Ice Walls. All, these two are Expel, but then it, I mean, hopefully it means I see Bide more. Um, Laceration. It's okay. Smoke Bomb. Does that get me what I need? For two? Yeah, in these boss fights, I think so. Especially if I'm combo based. Okay, all right, all right. Um, am I ready to start the battle? Yeah. I should probably put this in something. I can just put it on any attack card. Put on Opportunist. Just gaining block while doing that, uh, whatever, it's just a bonus. Alright. Oof, went a lot of prep. Okay, so every Void Spider killed only ticks us up to 30%, so I have to kill like four of them, basically. Um, Endless Swarm. This creature loses one frenzy each time it is the target of the attack card to a minimum of one. And it'll gain... Well, this is great. It'll gain one frenzy at the start of your turn. Um, okay. So we're going to start with this, right? Wait, hold on. Seven cards, inflict five damage to all creatures for each card discarded. No, okay, that's only 35, that's, wait, 35 damage, okay. Um, it's not going to take very long before I should make the swing, though. <laughs> um, all right. Hit everybody with this. Let's swing at you. Let's swing at you. Let's swing at all of you. <laughs> Um, should I? Eh, a lot of that. Or is it twelve? Uh, four. Yep. Twenty. That is this exactly. But I can kill everybody with a bacon bomb. So we're doing it. <laughs> uh, after all that build up. Okay, well, oh yeah, wait, if I end my turn, it's gonna spawn another one. Alright. <laughs> well, I took the 20 damage. I got a little ahead of myself there. Still have to wait, kill. Oh, that was a misplay. I should have. Wait, was it a misplay? Because I killed them all, they all came back? If I just killed one, then one would have come. Only one would have come back? Uh, all right. Let's see. It's okay. 
play this now. We need all this block for next time. Man, that's going to become a highlight. I thought it was so clever. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so this is down to one. Uh, trying to minimize like the attack damage here. Nine incoming threats, okay. And then now I can block, 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 block. Yeah, this is a, which one's a draw one, discard? This is a draw one, discard one. Great, we will discard um, the attack card. This is more efficient. Uh, I don't care which one of you takes this. The block 16. Let's block that. Give ourselves this. This. Hmm. If we purge this, we get to block. Cool. Don't get to use these. Might as well deal this damage, I think. These will go away. Oh no, the rebound one didn't go away. Oh, it just occurred to me. You can keep the rebound one. Is that right? It'll be returned to your hand. So you can just take the five, apply bleed, and then... Okay, okay. Having a little bit of a moment here. I'm just trying to gauge the value of like killing an enemy versus like using these just to tick down how much they swing for, but I guess killing them is just strictly better. I mean, this saves me three. Um, let's see. Doesn't really matter now. Okay. Mm. I feel like, um, yeah, let's just take this block and apply more bleed so we can keep going with this. And then being able to deal 40 damage is a good idea at some point. Um, they're going to lose their vulnerable stack, so... Okay, wait. Now's a good time to try and toss this if we can. Wait, except that we'll be able to deal enough damage this way. Oof, made it. Okay. How do I feel now about taking this blessing? Six block at the start of each turn, or... Before Bowman before, before say, okay, let's grab this blessing of weakness. We need to fight the Star Council. Blinded by arrogance, the Star Callers became entombed here within the Void's domain. Uh, tormented to forever seek out an escape to the dying stars they once called home. Cool. Fight tips high HP creatures' ability to go immune after being the target of a number of attack cards. They also prevent you from saving up cards in hand. How much am I doing that, actually? I don't know. How much am I doing that? I guess we can find out. We can see what other people do. The Puppet Master. The gloom will become its laughter as it mocks with a pantomime of dancing puppets of clacking wood. Breaking insanity, the crescendo of applause it seeks. The crescendo of applause it seeks. Uh, fight tips, manipulator of banes. If the fight prolongs, the banes will become overwhelming. Well, I have a thing that lets me draw a card when I get a bane, so maybe I'm I'm okay against this guy. It's gonna have... Hmm. <laughs> uh, Don Thorne in the chat. You know, I think they should take out the fight tips. Hmm. Why? Why? Well, why do you think that? I kind of like them. It gives me, like, a reason to do something. And it kind of advances the thing, which is 
after the first fight, I have a fight tip, right? Like, it's kind of like, oh, I know what's going to happen here now. I know that this guy has, like, a ton of puppets or whatever. Um, so it just saves it. I don't know. I kind of like the hint. Um, let me choose... Uh... Has ability to clear debuff, so we're definitely just not going to fight her. So, more fun to discover how to fight them in the fights. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, that's not wrong. It does kind of like take away this like bit of discovery. Um. Okay. I don't think we're throwing. No, we are kind of throwing a lot of attack cards because they're like zero cost cards. This kind of strikes me as kind of like um, Slay the Spire's um, Time Worm, that guy. I hated that so much. After every like 12 or 13 cards or whatever, he would um, increase in difficulty and cast a giant debuff. So no thanks. All right, let's take our chances with this one. You know, I will say, oh, have you fought him before? No, I haven't. I haven't fought. I haven't fought any of these before but to me the fight tips are kind of like it's the thing that you'll know after fighting them once so it just sort of like um shortcuts that feeling um or shortcuts that sort of like natural loop of the game like when i read this now it gives me a little bit of a of a hint like of what to do like oh i can't since i can change my deck here what do i want to do in relation to this hint um so anyway, that's kind of my, then again, it is sort of analysis by Rouse's analysis. Uh, the Banes will become overwhelming. I don't know. Okay, wait, let me see. What do I want to do here? I think we'll go back to backstab. And then let's start the battle. Okay. At the start of the fight, shuffle six Banes into your discard pile. This creature's frenzy equal to one plus the number of banes currently in your hand. I, wonder, I don't have any discard cards, so. All right, we'll do our regular opener. This and this. Um, do that. Always back to step first. I don't know why. Deal this damage. Um. I wonder if it's going to bring in any ads. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to purge that because I want mana in the draw. I haven't gotten the Banes yet. Uh, I can block six here and then just toss more blades at him. I'm okay with taking the one damage, I think. Um, hmm. Let's toss this because it's block 20. I have a high block card. I want to trigger the bleed when it's um, ticked much higher. There's the 10. Um, now's the time for that. Let's drop these. Oh, the combo two would be really nice to use at some point. So, oh, we'll we'll play this on a turn where we pulled some banes. Um, let's use this now. Let's toss that now. One overcharge. Um, okay, exit stage right. We'll expel the top card of your deck. Oh, it'll expel it and replace it with two banes. Hmm. What might I lose here? I don't know. I probably shouldn't pay too much attention to that because it's. I don't think it's super consequential actually. All right. Um. We can trigger this for 39 damage right now, or purge to apply to. Um, hmm. Let's 
Let's, I think we should stack the combo here. Okay, let's stack the combo. So now we're at th three max combo. Each of these steals, uh, this is 20 damage now. So this will apply 15 bleed. Um, yeah, let's do that. It'll take 86 damage next turn. Uh, yeah, that might be good to kind of accelerate into this. Ah, uh, pass it out. Oh. What did it get rid of? Ah, oh, last one. Wait. Hmm. Normally I start with this card. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Well, this still applies. So, oh no, we used up those stacks. That's okay. Blah blah blah. blah. Can we discard, or do we have anything that allows us to discard some banes? I mean, fourteen is not that bad. Okay, we're gonna play this. These go away. Scrap. Yeah. Wait, they get discarded. Um, let's see. I think now's the time to burst, uh, to do this backup burst. What's in here? Only damage cards. Yeah, let's do it here. Uh, Cause he has vulnerable too, so each of these is worth 12. So this is kind of this middle round of the fight to get him within range. If we can trigger bleed twice, um, then we I think we win here. Gotta keep Ice Wall though, I think. 14. Yeah, we gotta keep this for the next time. Um if I draw a lot of banes in the next in the next round, or one of these rounds, then he's gonna swing way more often. Uh like 30. So it'd be a good time to cancel that. Except I didn't draw enough block here. So I guess I'll take the 14 and then I'll try and cancel the 30. Um, all right. Well, this will help a little bit. Well, can I just win? No, can't probably. Can I draw? What if I block this 10. Wait, if I block this 10, I'll win. Because after it attacks, it's just going to eat. Eat this. Okay, we're good. I have sort of misread the game state before, so we did it. Great. I think we took no damage that round, so that's cool. Can't fight any more guardians, so here we go. Now do I really? No, we're going to see what happens if I hold on to these 10 souls. All right. The Void. When the light of the last star finally fades, this thing will remain. So, cross the threshold, enter the Vault of the Void. Fight tips, the Void will gain AP every turn, and debuffs will reduce by as fast. Um, it just occurs to me now, and like, or anyway. Um, is this, uh, Dawn Thorn, is this like a huge spoiler <laughs> for the game? Um, I don't know how you, I guess, I mean, I guess it's in early access, so. Um, it, stuff might change, so, anyway. Um, uh, if this feels spoilery, uh, please avail yourself. <laughs> uh, but then again, this is sort of not, I don't know, boss fights? Or is that, that's sort of not what the games are about, I, I kind of feel like, but... Um, Slay the Spire was about boss fights, though, so anyway, maybe I'm going back on the, the thing that I said. Yeah, Don Thorne says, uh, nah, they're obviously going to flesh it out more. Also, it doesn't really seem to have a story. Absolutely true. This this is a, a storyless game. I mean, much in the same way that, that Slay the Spire was like all flavor, 
and and I don't know, like good, interesting, but not like no story, which is why I think I w I sort of categorize this in the, um, this is like a pretty direct inheritor to me of Slay the Spire in that, what it, it didn't say was like Slay the Spire, but there's a plot, <laughs> which is I think the take that that a lot of games kind of like did when they saw Slay the Spire, and I don't know, I like those takes, I don't you know, um, but uh. But something that's like really mechanically um, crunchy, I think, is is super interesting to me. All right, I don't really know what to do with the deck, and I don't really know what to do with the. Wait, it'll gain AP every turn. And debuffs will be reduced twice as fast. So I think this is where Nightmare Steed might do okay, because if I can, if I can gain a whole bunch of um, uh, a whole bunch of block like. I don't know. Seems like what I might need to do at some point of uh, uh, this battle. So, okay. Does the deck need to change? Let's see. Why am I filtering here? Let's do card tech first. Hmm. Maybe I swap for this if I feel like it'll deal a whole bunch of damage because 25% reducing AP by 25% is more or is more value if it's always gaining AP right there may be a point where I'm reducing my damage by what does it say here two four I mean I don't know um yeah why don't I do that why don't I let's pop that up One of those is fine. This is two to trigger target's bleed, and this is two to trigger it and expel. I should just use this. Except this has this purge effect. What is the breed here? Purge, you gonna purge? Okay, yeah. All right, uh, having an ability helps us also, so we're gonna do that. Um, okay. At the start of each turn, gain 25% rage. That seems like it'll help us here. Okay. I mean, is there any, there's no reason not to do this. We're at the void, right? So this is the end of the... We have no more void stones. Okay, all right, all right. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> the void fills us all. That's the passive. It'll gain one AP every turn. Whatever never condi con negative conditions are reduced, the void will take them down by two. Okay, I wonder what that means for lacerations, which I should play immediately. Okay, apply five to all enemies, and we'll tick it up. Um, let's just deal the damage. And we'll go. Okay. Um, this is a late game card. Mm. Let's see. Where did the overcharge come from? Just play this for the blade. Need to get the damage from somewhere. Let's see, two energy at the start of each each following round. Oh, we'll gain block. Uh, we gain block at the beginning, or six block at the beginning of every round. Very useful. I think that means I'll just do this to add the bleed. So the stack of 12 stays 12. 
So it's not shedding them is basically what we get from our um, laceration card. I'll take it. Um, six incoming. Block 22 is overkill, but we want the combo. Um, so we'll just do this. I did it for the combo. Do I want to play this here? No purges here, which feels a little strange, but... Um, Okay. This is a useful time to purge this. We're gonna do that. Do that. We're gonna do that. Recombo. Um Zero incoming that fury will increase frenzy by one. Yeah, it turns out that's pretty huge. Alright, this is a good time for this, I think, then. This is a swift attack. The first time I do it, it'll uh, deal, wait, nine. It'll deal 56 damage here. Okay, cool. This will then down to 14, so. Live it on the high horse, but 10 overcharge is great. I mean, I'm, I'm set up for a bunch of good turns here, so. Happy January 16th, everybody. We made another day. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Do we care about... Hold on. 27 next turn. So, yeah, I mean, we need to... Yeah, I can hold on to this. Deal this damage. What does it get to you? Plus three. All right. Um, what do I discard? Will let me discard that. It will let me discard that, which I think is strange, but okay. I'll just apply this this also to get the weak um let's see we need the smoke bomb draw one discard one discard that for do that discard one uh let's see can't block that, so... Oh, no, we can't. Uh, no, we need two for this. I need to remember that. Fifteen, thirty-three. All right, let's see. No combo. Let's use this for purge. Block here. Play another ability. Discard that. Um, these are both abilities. This is zero. So I'm going to play this next round and then we'll hopefully get to buff a Nightmare Steed to deal with the 33 incoming. And doing this by 26 increments of 26 damage is just not not enough. <laughs> okay. Um, well, then I gotta abide. So then we're gonna. This is what we're gonna do. We'll do that. Go up to three combo. Just gonna keep on having tons of energy. Um, zero incoming threat, so I guess this is time to just swing. Uh, let's see. We'll do gutted, or from shadow gutted. That'll be four. Yeah, all right. Uh, 
All right. We have our three combo. So... Ba, ba, ba. 52 incoming threat. Oof. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is an okay thing to do. Ah, need so much damage. Um, okay, we're gonna need this next turn. For sure. Alright, let's see. This is kind of Hail Mary territory. Do we do it right now? No, because we get too much from purging it, I think. We'll do this. Um... Are we going to increase bleed at all this turn? Probably not. Just get as much value as possible from that. This is still just block 15. So we can... Yeah, let's use this here. Do this. Okay, it's 16 equal to 15 plus 1 for each ability. So, okay. Anyway, it's, fift it's 15 block and then it's... Um, well, it's a perfect amount of block. Uh, plus the number of uh, abilities you played each turn. The card, the templating on this was a little, a little weird. But okay. What can we draw? Can we draw anything that'll like make us feel a lot better? Ah, kind of. All right. Fifty-six incoming. Uh, mitigated by the six block a turn. That seemed really useful, but, um... Alright, so it's time for... We're gonna do abide. Uh, let's see. Is that... Yeah. We'll do it. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Draw one, discard one. I draw one, discard one, discard. We'll take the 20 here. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna make it. Ooh, man. Fifty-four is a lot. that we can still drop a shield wall which is block 16 that's eight per energy um get rid of this this is four for nothing or four for zero but we can turn it into one and then block for five should do I mean, block for six, really. Um, let's see. Okay. Eighty five incoming. This is swift. So 15, 60 damage. Okay, that's kind of the that's the kind of thing we need to see. Um, yeah, so we do that. Ton. Fly weak. That's good. Bring us down to 60. I think we trade this in for. Yeah, and. Uh, Okay, we're gonna buy next turn. We'll pull more combo. Uh, okay, so this will be game ending if I don't mitigate it. So let's keep that in mind. All right. 
probably want. Uh, we are definitely going to do that. Uh, uh, yep. Cast this as many times as it'll let us. Um, no longer game ending. 19. Uh, we're going to need two to play it. So, shoot. This, I feel like, gets us closer to our win con. Well, there's no way to play. Well, wait, can I? Oh, can't purge this anyway. All right, let's just take the shield wall and just do it. That was not super well thought out, kind of intuitive play. All right, can I take 44 off of this? Ooh, ooh. Ice wall. Your time to shine. Um. Yeah, we're not going to be able to spend the two, so. Let's see. Ice wall's time to shine is actually when we're going to lose, so. Let's see. Four. How many. How much more? It's a rebound, so I can. Eight off of this. Yeah, I think that, that might be this one. Eight plus 12, 20. Yeah, I don't think I could. It's going to be hard to block 44 or 20 plus 10, 30. Yeah, so I think this is the turn. So it's zero. Two combo. We're not going to use it on this. So we'll hold on to that extra. All right. Uh. All right. Oof. All right. I don't think we're playing any attacks this round. I think I'm just going to play these, and then I need to play as much block as possible. Um, let's do the draw one, discard one. Um, mm -hmm. Ah, to a block 12, that's better. So, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> One damage. Uh, uh, have I okay? Have I not thought about something? I have forty-four HP. There's forty-five damage coming in. No cards. No spell. All right. This game has potions. They're used at the beginning of the battle. Yeah, all right. Here we go. Yes. Uh, sorry. I don't think I lost my mind here. Don Thorne asks, what makes his fury increase? And oh, it's an action type. It takes sometimes it looks like. Yep, that's right. So uh, it's uh, in the middle of the little card. It's so funny. The um, tooltips are huge. <laughs> in the middle of the card frame, it shows what action it's going to take. Usually it's an attack. Um, sometimes it's a special ability. In this case, it's this Fury attack. And it gains basically one damage every turn. Every now and then it, it decides to swing plus, or every time it does Fury, it swings one extra time or it adds an instance of swing to each of its turn turns. I was just two turns away with this level of bleed. Um, yeah. Well, that's card games, I guess. I mean, like, oh, I just needed one more block card. I needed, what, quickness at zero zero energy for block um all right i'm gonna take my loss here uh cool all right well that's vault of the void went 16 rounds with the void i feel okay about that seems good oh wow it tells you how many rounds Neat. Neat, neat, neat. 
Um, each time you make it to the vault, you'll get a chance to choose a new card to master. Each class has 10 commons you can master. Hmm. Once you have mastered a card, you'll have the chance to add it to your backpack at the start of future runs. Okay. These are all regular commons. What does it mean? Oh, it just means you have it. Uh, yeah, super close. Uh, Don Thorne says, super close. Was that your first run? This was uh, second, but the first run is abbreviated. The first run is like a tutorial run, and they just have you go through the f like one floor, and then it just and then it ends. Um, so this is the first run on the normal the normal difficulty, which is probably probably says something about the curve. Maybe not being quite steep enough. You might actually be right that the fight tips make it so that someone who's like played a bunch of these games can actually make it to the to the very end in the first run. So that's kind of worth worth thinking about. But I mean, for what it's worth, very satisfying, very satisfying run through the game, and I don't know, tuned okay considering like you know, like I was on the razor razor margin of like winning. That's like a that tends to be feel like a satisfying end. So, yeah, that's actually totally true. Don Thorne writes, uh, "That's good. It would be sucky to beat the main boss on your first run." Yes, I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I, I'm glad I didn't make it all the way through. I think there are two more classes. So there's like the thing that'll keep. Even if I did win, I think the thing that would keep me through is, "Oh, I want to see how these other classes work." But, um, but yeah, okay. Um, let's see. So the funny thing about combo is that. There are two rogue like builds that you can start with. You can start with what is kind of a combo based build, and the other one's a bleed based build. And I started the first run I did was a combo based build. The second one I was like, oh, I'm gonna take bleed cards, no combo cards. But combo turns out to be like pretty crucial anyway, because um, combo bu buffs swift cards, so this card becomes a lot more effective. So. This is not good value, but once upgraded, it's zero. And then obviously if you socket it, you start to be able to put together some kind of degenerate uh, degenerate patterns with it. So I think combo might be the way to go. Yeah, Don Thorne writes, yeah, this game looks pretty good. I think that on the in the card game, across the the span of card games, I was I I I felt like it looked a little like hinky, like 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 for example, this gigantic tooltip is hilarious. <laughs> um, and there's you know, but uh, but the mechanics are pretty are pretty sound. Um, um someone that I uh, kind of follow from Netrunner. Uh, Netrunner Days um, has started posting videos about this um, and it kind of piqued my interest in what game is this? It looks a little, it looks like Hearthstone, it looks a little, a little it's a little janky but um, you know I, I I took a look at a video and kind of hopped in and I said like okay I think it, they the designer kind of knows what's up um, okay all right, we'll take this. We'll take this. I feel good about combo. So I can uh, add this to my backpack at the start of future runs. Uh, cool. Let me hop into this. Okay, so there's the that's the mastery. Can I do any of this stuff? All right, I'm just gonna jump into the new. Um, I'm gonna. Ah, okay. I actually did unlock a new class, so we're not gonna jump into this right now. But why don't we just poke our poke our heads into what's happening here? The enlightened, with the ability to bend time, he strikes quickly and without warning. So there's the martial deck, which is right, lashing kick. Future strike. At the end of every turn, inflicts damage and gives one uh give one fatigue. Not considered a debuff. Fatigue uh will increase the number of times a future strike is applied, added to any she, not considered a debuff. Zen Sate. Enter Zen by playing three cards of the same type. 
In Zen, all cards will cost minus one energy. Duration, five cards played or end of turn. Um, okay. So if you pay three attacks, then this will add slow one. I'm not sure I understand what Future Strike is doing. Deal three Future Strike twice. Uh... Block three, delay block five. So I'll block at the beginning of the next turn. Foresight. Reduce the cost of a card from your deck to zero until that card is played or the battle ends. Uh, that seems cool. If you deal, if you attack with this first, then uh, it gives rage 25. All right, mindfulness. Uh, deal two damage, deal two, three she. Creature is destroyed when she ex exceeds its remaining HP, transferring 50% between all remaining. Uh, okay. Okay, they suffer fatigue. Ah, so it makes future strike deal more uh deal more damage or it stacks. Okay. Ghost. So it can show up twice. If you play it first, you'll get another one. Uh repeating deflection, is that the same? Oh yeah, it's the same block card. One vulnerable and weak one. Vulnerable one, weak one, Zen, deal six she Ooh, okay. So it's like a combo closer, so one, two, three, four. Stillness. Discipline, block six, delay block nine, follow up, rage 50. Let's follow up. We'll trigger if your chain is currently active and matches the card's type, or if you're in Zen. Chain is active. Is this... Every third time you enter Zen, draw one. It's called Focus. Vision one, Zen. Vision. Choose a card from your discard to place on top of your deck. Hmm. Okay. Leverage. Inflict vulnerable one feature strike four to all non-fatigued creatures. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, we know what we're doing next time, I guess. All right. Take it easy, Dontron. Thanks for checking in. Um, and I'm off to... Thanks for...